Hello, hello.
Hello, everybody. We are now wise live from Berlin, uh, the apartment in Wedding. And uh, I'm uh, very happy to have with me here uh, Professor Friedrich von Boris. Um, he is uh, really good at uh, doing nothing. <laughs> no, he has like he has a grant for doing nothing actually, which is quite amazing. Um, but uh, I don't want to tell you too much about it. Uh, he can do that. Um, so uh, it's also the talk is also about the creativity of cities uh, post COVID nineteen. Um, mixed in with doing nothing. So, up to you know, over to you. Yes, uh, hello. Thank you for for listening or watching. And uh, yeah, the next twenty minutes, I will try to uh, talk a little bit about uh, the city, about creativity, and uh, about uh, COVID nineteen and how the city and uh, creativity will come together after it. So I will start to talk uh, a bit about city. We are all familiar with living in cities, but cities has been uh, very much different um, over the time of uh, their existence. Um, maybe the first cities appeared something like 10 to 15,000 years uh, ago uh, when the Neolithic era began, so when people stopped uh, to be hunters and uh, started to become farmers. And by changing this economic structure, they, they won time. And then they asked themselves, what should we do with that time? And they had the idea to produce things uh, they didn't need it before. So something like culture, like art and crafts came up. And the city came up because people thought about how they could protect what they all have produced. They don't want to leave it uh, un, uh, unwatched on the countryside. So they built a new structure, the city. The city, which was uh, in the very beginning always walled so protected. So the very beginning of, of the city is also an idea of, um, of conflict and of war. We should have that in mind when we talk about uh, the city uh, nowadays. Um, so for a very long time, uh, cities, um, or maybe ever since, cities have been the place for economic and uh, political power. And also the term politics is linked to the history uh, of cities. Uh, politics is based on the Greek word polis, which was also the name for the Greek city. So the polis is the, s the, the place where what we now uh, describe as a democracy evolved something like uh, 2000 and something uh, years ago. So um, not only uh <coughs> the basic mode of warfare and conflict is linked to the city, but also our today's idea of democracy uh, is uh, was born in the city as the idea that the people living in the city should discuss uh, on an equal uh, level how they want uh, to live uh, together. But when we're talking about cities, we are nowadays using the term city, the word city and not the word polis. Uh, and city is uh, coming from, uh, uh, from uh, uh, old Latin and uh, was linked uh, or is based on the term civitas, which is um, not the same like polis. It's more abstract. It's not so spatial. Uh, and um, another word evolved from uh, civitas, which is civilization. So the, the, the today's concept of civilization, so that uh, a, a specific cultural uh, behavior and a specific way to negotiate conflicts uh, amongst humans is also based in the city. And the French word citoyen uh, as uh, someone who is uh, having specific rights uh, against the state. Uh, also, uh, the idea of human rights is based in the concept of this city and in the concept of civilization. Some people tend not to use the word city they tend to use the word urban space. And this is also linked, and after that I will stop. No, I, I won't stop to talk about uh, historical aspects and words, but I think it's always very helpful. And uh, the, the word urban space is, uh, is rooted also in a Latin word, urbs, which is the Latin word for castle. So there we again have the, the, the military connotation of what we call a city today. Um, so, if we look into the history of cities, we see that cities 
are a very contradictory space. On the one hand, we have this history, uh, the, 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 of the history of uh, a space where culture evolved, where the concept of democracy evolved. Also, if we think on the European uh, city in the Middle Age, where people said the air of city makes free, because a city was a space where you are free from uh, the, the the king or uh, from from your from your landlords. The city was a space of the free people. Um, so we have also the connotation of freedom, culture, politics, power, war, and freedom. They are all these all these contradictions are are linked with our um, concept um, uh, of um, of the city. So. Uh, and the city was also s also the space where in the in the 18th and 19th century the the concept of uh, enlightenment starts the uh, the whole cultural empowerment of uh, homosexuality for example is uh, linked to the urban space and to the city because the city especially the city in the 19th century when they become bigger and bigger offered uh, uh, something which is very important for what we understand today as urban life which is anonymity as a big contrast to small cities or the countryside where everybody knows everybody and therefore also know what everyone is doing uh, in the big cities which uh, in Europe uh, and in the Western world uh, developed uh, in the 19th century with industrialization, something like anonymity came up and therefore the possibility to behave uh, in a way you maybe don't want that your neighbors or your friends or whoever knows about. This was only possible uh, in big cities where you have the guarantee of uh, anonymity. So a lot of um, cultural and social um, uh, empowerment is rooted in the concept or in the possibility of uh, anonymous activity, um, which is only city um, possible um, in, the, in the city. Um, linked to this um, aspect of anonymity is also density. Uh, a lot of uh, cultural theorists argue that um, the city is a space for uh, creativity, the space uh, where knowledge evolves, because the city is so dense that people which normally or which outside the city would never meet could meet here accidentally or on purpose without uh, big problems because there are so many people in the city and so exchange could happen more easily than in, uh, in less dense areas. So again, because that is important uh, for later on, it's uh, the quality of the city is about density and about anonymity. Um, so uh, I talked so much about this history of the city because I wanted to show you that the city itself is creative. The city itself is creating new lifestyles. The city itself is creating new knowledge and the city itself is also creating a new ways of, uh, of politics, of the organization, how people want to live together over its time of the history. Um, now I want to talk a little, about, uh, a little bit about creativity. And uh, now, really, for the last time, I will go to, to, the, to the, 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 the roots of the word. It's also a Latin word uh, coming from uh, creare, which originally means to produce something. So the creative people are people who produce something. And for a very long time, it was, um, uh, let's say, reserved for, for artists, for people who uh, produce uh, cultural values. And in the 1990s, so some 30 years ago, an um, um, American uh, economist, Richard Florida, came up with the word uh, cultural class, uh, creative class, and uh, the creative city. And um, with, the, uh, with the decline of industrialization, he envisioned uh, 30 years ago that, you that, that the new power class uh, are the creative people because they uh, produce um, uh, uh, un uh, immaterial values. And um, in that moment, or with that idea, the idea of creativity left the space of the arts and opened up to uh, the world also of uh, economics. And this, uh, as I think, horrible term of creative industries came up. So the old industry, the material industry, which is uh, producing cars and objects and machines, uh, <coughs> was substituted by this, the new industry, the creative industry, 
uh, including um, uh, advertisement, including um, uh, um, several kinds of services, so all kind of imma immaterial uh, values and goods, but not uh, art uh, in, in, its, in its real um, uh, meaning. Um, a German uh, cultural scientist, Andreas Reckwitz, started maybe 10 years ago to, spo to speak about the dispositive of uh, creativity. So in, in his uh, idea, we are all nowadays are, are forced to be creative, creative uh, to find a partner uh, in an online uh, uh, partnership um, uh, website. Uh, you have to be creative in the way how you improve yourself. Yeah? Uh, we all know you, the, the, the message uh, nowadays is that you have to change, you have to uh, develop, you are self-creative. In a way, we are all the artists, the creators of our own. And um, this is for sure linked to this idea of creative industry, where uh, the goods uh, on which uh, capitalism um, is based on are not material anymore, they are immaterial. It's software. It is ideas, it is concepts, and it's not machines, cars, whatever, these, these kind of uh, object uh, bond uh, goods. And the question is um, now coming to COVID-19 and this very interesting experience of not working, staying at home, not meeting people, even so living in a city, not participating on, on everything what is what I described before on what what the quality and the power of cities is like meeting people you don't know before meeting people by chance being anonymous yeah? the, the whole concept of the of the COVID and I think also of the post COVID area is less density distance and like we sit here you don't see someone sitting next to me there all uh, uh, two meters away at least uh, so it's it's not dense anymore it's not accidental anymore uh, uh, you attract who are you meeting when and where to to uh, uh, follow up uh, who is uh, uh, infecting whom um, uh, so it's uh, and it's not anonymous anymore yeah? you have always to know who is where because otherwise you can't follow the, the virus anymore. So everything, what we normally think, what the quality of the city is, is eroding. Um, so in a way, if we talk about what is the uh, creativity in post-COVID areas, it's a big, big task, the big, big uh, um, job all creative people have to do is to rethink what city could be, how, uh, how we could save what we uh, have developed in the last 100 years from the perspective of freedom in cities to avoid that all these aspects of power and economics, which are also uh, linked to the city, will, will take over. I think that will be a real, real big um, issue to have this these, these, uh, contradictive structure of the city between freedom political power and economic power to, to keep the balance which we had in the Western world for the last, let's say, 40 to 100 years, where the freedom was one real important aspect why, why so many people moved to the cities, uh, how we can, can keep that. Um, so, and um, for sure we can now start to, to develop new uh, creative, innovative narratives, like a little bit maybe this uh, conference is also doing, telling uh, we, we, we st will stop traveling and we will live more digital, uh, we can uh, experience all these things uh, virtually and so on. We can uh, discuss about the pragmatic changes we need in the city to, to, s to, to kind of, uh, well, keep the city uh, um, a little bit like it is uh, or like we know it from before. We can talk about the smart cities for more s smarter tracking. We can uh, discuss new ways uh, of public transport and mobility, which uh, avoid uh, dense masses uh, being uh, uh, trapped uh, in, in buses and trains. Uh, uh, well, like in many Western cities, we now have new concepts for, for bicycling, for example, to, to, to have uh, sustainable individual transport in the city. We can think about new working environments, home offices, and so on. We can discuss about more green space and how we can 
organize public space in a way that we can go out of our apartments without meeting other people uh, due to these strict regulations uh, of COVID and so on. Um, but I think this, I mean, it's important, but that's not really what I'm hoping what creative people will do because it's um, I it will only, let's say, strengthen the capitalist track of the city as um, space for economic innovation and uh, will not foster the aspect of freedom within the cities. And I don't have the solution, really not. And because I don't have the solution, I uh, opened uh, uh, up a new grant where everybody who's listening, if he or she wants to, can apply. Um, uh, we call it uh, the grant for doing nothing. And I think doing nothing is really the most creative thing you could, could do right now to, to, to develop strategies. What an interesting way of doing nothing would be, not the boring way many people uh, uh, um, explored, discovered, suffered, suffered during uh, c the, the um, shutdown uh, from um, COVID-19. Uh, so what is, a, what is a good way of, of doing nothing? So we opened up a grant uh, at the uh, University of Fine Arts in Hamburg where I'm teaching. Um, and everybody who wants to apply has to um, uh, give an uh, answer to four questions. And the, the first question is, what do you want not to do? So it's not just about laziness. Uh, the, the, our idea of doing nothing is to decide what you not want to do. And then the second question is why it is important not to z do this specific uh, thing. For example, you can say, I want to stop driving cars. I want to stop being nasty to other people. I want to stop having negative energy, whatever. It could be many things you say I want to stop with. And the, um, the third question is uh, why are you the right person to do that? Yeah, for example, I am a university teacher, so I can say I want to stop giving uh, boring lectures. Uh, and I'm the right person for that because from time to time I tend to give boring lectures. And other maybe will say I will stop to sell things uh, because I'm a shop owner or whatever. So different people have different um, possibilities to, to stop doing specific things. And the fourth question is then um, when and for how long you want to do that. Because we think it's very, very difficult to, to actively be inactive, to, to, to uh, intentionally decide to do something not. People, other people will get angry on you, maybe you fail in that, and so you can't, for, for this grant, it's an experiment where you say, I want to do something for one hour or for four weeks or for six months, it's up to you, and it's depend on, uh, on, on what it is, what you want to stop to do. And uh, yes, and we offer three grants, uh, each of them with 1,600 euro uh, for doing nothing. And maybe whilst doing nothing, you guys will come up with the idea what the creativity in the city of the future will be. Thank you. Thank you so much, Friedrich. That was uh, really, really great. Um, we don't even have time for questions anymore, really. Uh, maybe one question, if anybody has one. No? I mean, actually, uh, I just wanted to add something. It could be interesting to see because, like, when people are coming together in the cities, you said, like, your things are happening, right? Um, and since now, like, there will be, like, a social uh, distance uh, kind of thing going on, um, and we are talking now to virtual reality, basically. So, actually, in virtual reality, there are probably people coming together now <laughs> looking at this uh, and maybe interacting. That's actually, like, about our next performance as well. There will be, like, interaction in virtual reality. Um, so do you think that this is a new way of uh, people coming together or is, this, is there something missing? I mean, it doesn't need to be no virtual reality, it can also be just online in general, do you think? Yes, for sure. I think that will be the reality of, the, of tomorrow and it is already uh, of today. I never have thought that I will spend so many times on, on Zoom and uh, uh, FaceTime and so on to, to speak with my students and my colleagues. 
and it was uh, also great. Uh, I mean, it's it's horrible not to see people in person, but it's nice uh, to do that uh, while sitting on a beach. Um, so it, it will have advantages and it will have problems. And for sure, it's um, it's uh, one uh, task of the c so-called creative industries to develop better solutions, new solutions uh, with uh, new environments, new experiences, new sensitivity. Let's say it's kind of very visual right now, and not very tactile. Not uh, you can't smell, you can, uh, and so on. Uh, I think we will see that uh, a lot of changes will happen there. Um, but nonetheless, I, I, I would say this is still in the track of uh, capitalist growth, um, of um, improvement by innovation, um, and it's uh, not about freedom. And I think uh, the, 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 the creative people has to keep in mind that the, the biggest uh, value uh, creativity has created is freedom and how we can keep that in the new virtual environments, in the new uh, COVID control environments and so on. And because without freedom, we don't have creativity. And, uh, and that's, uh, yeah, that's my, my main message. Thank you so much, uh, Friedrich. So wherever you are in virtual reality in Berlin, uh, in China somewhere, or wherever you're watching this, um, yeah, you know, just don't forget, uh, be creative for the freedom of it. Okay, thank you very much. And bye now to uh, the next um, performance in virtual reality, actually. It's called The Candidates uh, by Mukul and Manu. See you there. I'm going to be asking each candidate the same question. This is an opportunity for them to articulate their policy, position, vision, and values. And now, please welcome to the stage candidates Alonso, Nichols, and Liang. <coughs> A word to our audience, I encourage you to use your cameras during this debate just to spread word of the candidates' positions through your networks. 
there will be opportunities for personal photos with the candidates later. Let's begin with candidate Liang. Today's question is, what is the greatest threat facing us islanders today? The one thing that does trouble me here, it's the wanderers. How many makers and hackers have arrived here to explore, to search for the gold at the end of the rainbow, only to disappear. They walk and walk, drawn toward the infinite horizons, and become lost forever. Things of our best and brightest each month. And we just can't afford to any longer. This is the greatest threat to our survival. Not too many people, but too few. We don't need Candid Liang's security wall to keep people out. What we need is a guardian, a boundary to embrace us and hold us together. That is what I offer. A vote for me is a vote for the future. You know what to do on election night. 
Thank you. So, um, thank you, and uh, can uh, you hear them? Listen to these two very, uh, uh. very bad talking, bad talking, good at talking, and will we see action? Never going to happen. But, but I can. I know the real problem is in my pockets. I've got it in my hand. Shiny phone. Tremendously safe with me. Tremendous. So these jokers, I call them morons, and that's really being nice to them. They can see the problems that they can see. But what about the others? Sure, we have too many people barging in. Sure, we keep losing them. Too bad. Too sad. But true, I hold my hands up. Big hands, both of them. But they're wrong. You know what the real problem is? Polly, even you, I'm the only one who sees it. Smart enough? They're under the floor, folks. Look behind you. It's in the walls. And all over your screens. Electric germs everywhere. Why? Because we're infected. You can't trust anyone. I only trust myself. Do you know who made your email? Who grew the, what's it, silicon farm? Pretending to be soybeans. Can you believe it? From outside, the foreign agents. They copy us, steal us, steal our ideas, my money, they steal your children. Alzani, Niklos, they're not going to save you with a little bitty fence. I'm not scared. I'll send in a huge army. Lock them up. Checkpoints. Get used to it. A huge, can I say this? A freaking firewall. Tremendously hot. Very fine. Try sneaking in. I dared them. Okay, we're done here. We're done. Uh, thank you very much, Candidate Alonso. Thank you to all the candidates and to our audience. Uh, the final debate and where do we stand? Let's have some analysis from our own pundit, Maxima Foresight. Maxima, what do you make of all of it? Well, Polly. The candidates certainly have their own personalities, but their messages were very predictable. It made me wonder how different this island actually is from the real world. How will the story continue? Of course, that is up to you, dear audience, dear players and makers. Remembering separating the synesthetic and the real world is permeable to money, to desire, to will, to my words, even to coercion. Will the islands of new realities end up ruled by yet another emperor with new clothes? Food for thought, as usual, Maxima, that's all from me and the candidates today, but you have still got time to grab some selfies. Go ahead, click and tweet. <laughs>